Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new tutorial about how to edit, manipulate, and change the textures and materials for 3D characters created in Adobe Fuse inside of Photoshop. So in some earlier tutorials, I talked about Adobe's new 3D character creator app, Adobe Fuse, where you can create custom characters, change the clothing, and do all sorts of fun stuff and then send them into Photoshop or Cinema 4D or wherever you want to send them. So if you're totally new to Fuse, be sure to check out any of those tutorials by either clicking that thumbnail or heading to motiontutorials.net and searching Adobe Fuse, where you can learn all about creating 3D characters, manipulating them, changing the clothing, all sorts of stuff. All right, shameless plug over. Let's get back into Photoshop. And what I want to talk about in this one is how you can pop open any of those textures and materials like we see here of this full flatten material of this guy's jacket and do things like delete them, edit them, change them, and manipulate them all within Photoshop with the tools you're already familiar with. So here I have this character that I've imported into Photoshop that I created in Adobe Fuse. And if I make sure I'm in my 3D workspace, which you can do by going to Window Workspace 3D, and if I have my selection tool, I could move them and rotate them and all sorts of stuff. But if I click on any of these sub layers, which are body material, mass material, shoes material, top and bottom, you can see that it lights up just those parts. And over in our properties panel, we can really customize that material and change it and do whatever we want to it. So as an example, if I click on this body material, you can see it lights up his head and his hands because that's really all we can see. But over here in properties, if I click on diffuse and edit texture, it's going to pop that open in a separate window. And you can see that's a totally flattened version of the entire material for all of that mesh. That's the body. And you can see we have all the parts of it, like his teeth, his hands, and there's this UV overlay. So we can see how it is wrapped around him. And if we look at properties, we could turn those on and off as well as change the color if we just wanted to kind of see a different overlay and turn down the opacity if we wanted to. And what's happening here is these are all just actually smart objects within our one Photoshop file, just like any other smart objects would work. So I'll close this one and let's go to this top material as an example, that's his jacket. And same idea, I can open up the diffuse texture and click edit texture. And it's gonna pop open that jacket. You can see I got my same UV overlay changes that I've added. And in my layers, that's just a locked background layer. So it's just like any other layers in Photoshop and I don't even need to flatten it when I'm done. So I could do anything I normally would do. Say, let's just duplicate the layer with Command J. I could leave that background unedited just to make sure I have a copy. And then I could use my normal tool. So let's say I wanna change this blue kind of tone to something a little different. I could go to select color range and kind of eyedropper this blue and kind of bring it up to where it gets most of that blue. You could also shift to kind of add more of that blue, go to okay, it's gonna select that. And then I can make a new adjustment layer down here, go to hue saturation, and then just change that color. So let's make it maybe like a, a red, we can make it kind of a brighter red, just to show what's going on. And then when I press save, so I'll do command S, it's going to pop open this dialog window about how all this works. We can click OK, and then it's going to update over here. So it's a really great way to be able to work without deleting or destroying anything. And then if we wanted to go back, we could just save after we unhide the new layers and bam, it's updated. So we could keep doing stuff. Say we wanted to change the letters of this SWAT word. We could get our quick selection tool, just grab those real quick and then make a new layer and I'll call this SWAT letters new or whatever you want. Just don't be one of those people that doesn't name their layers because it'll drive me crazy. And maybe let's just fill that with red just to make sure, just to make a point of how it's going to save. Doesn't look that pretty, but just want to show how it works. Again, I'll save and I'll go back to my main Photoshop file. I can grab my camera tools up here and orbit around and zoom in and we can see those letters have changed. Awesome. So it's really easy to do this. And again, what's awesome is it's all of the stuff that's already familiar in Photoshop. So it's just this layered smart object within our main Photoshop file. And if we go to that main Photoshop file and look under history, we have all those changes. So we could just 
back up those camera changes and even back up our smart object updates the same way you would do anything in Photoshop. So let's just close that one and we'll save it, sure. And let's talk about a couple other things. Maybe you wanna do something more subtle. Let's take a look at this gas mask, same idea. We could go to diffuse, edit texture, and bam, there's our whole gas mask. And maybe we just wanna lighten up the whole thing. So again, we could just get an adjustment layer and go to something like curves for color correction and just kind of lighten up the whole thing and save. I'm gonna click don't show this. I think you guys get the idea. And there we kind of lightened up the whole thing and we could you know, tweak that and kind of see how it falls on our character while we have the document open. So that's awesome. Maybe let's just add a couple more just so we can really drive this point home. I'll add vibrance, save. And again, we could keep our original background layer, that's the texture, not changed. So we could always go back and forth. And again, in our main Photoshop file, under 3D, when I click any of these, like that gas mask, it's gonna open all that up in this properties window where we have all of our material settings and images that are linked to it, like diffuse, specular, as well as normal maps, all like we would in a standard full 3D program. So we could even use this to kind of delete all the materials and make kind of a clay look. And this brings up another point I wanna bring up is how much stuff there is in these materials, say we have this gas mask and let's just say we wanna show it without this material at all. I'll just make a new material, misspell the word white, but whatever, I'll just fill that with white and then save. And we can see it's replaced that with white as a material, but we can see we still kind of see some stuff. And that's something that's really important to keep in mind is if we take a look at this mass material, yes, there's this diffuse texture, which we're looking at right here, but there's also a couple additional layers going into how this looks. If I pop open specular and edit texture, it's really subtle, but you can see there's some specular details there. And on the bottom of this properties panel, if I go to normal, there's a texture there. And if I pop that open, we can see there's a full normal map, which is gonna make this material look a lot more realistic because there's peaks and valleys that'll look like they're in the texture based on light direction. So if you really wanted to change these completely and strip it all out, you would need to do that with all of the parts of the material, the diffuse, specular, normal map, whatever there is, and then make the adjustments across all of them. So if you're doing something like we were talking about of changing this gas mask, or even popping this jacket open and changing the letters of the colors, it's really important to not forget to look at everything else that goes into the material because we pop open the normal of that material and it turn off UV overlays. You can see there's additional information there. So if you wanted to delete that and put a different name on it, you got to remember that you got to do that everywhere that that might appear. And the way you can kind of tell that is on this material, there'll be this edit texture if there's one linked and new texture if there isn't one. So environment as an example, or illumination maps, there isn't one. So you wouldn't have to worry about it. So using some of these techniques, you can fully manipulate and adjust the materials that are dynamically created when you save your custom character to your CC libraries from Adobe Fuse. And that's kind of an important thing to remember is it's gonna send over not only that character and let you add all the mocap data, but also these materials that you can kind of manipulate and adjust as well. All right in Photoshop with the layer system and adjustment layers and editing tools that you might already be familiar with. And if you wanna get a hold of these project files, I feel like it would help to kind of take a look at these. You can do that by heading over to motiontutorials.net and going up to support the show where you can throw in a couple extra bucks and I'll send you project files from this tutorial or whichever ones you're looking for. Or if you wanna become a weekly supporter of the show, you can head to patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where you can also throw in a couple extra bucks per tutorial, get access to a set of project files or even all the project files if you wanna donate at a little higher level and get some added perks like that and know that it helps me be able to set aside the time to make these weekly tutorials about Fuse, Cinema 4D, Photoshop, After Effects, whatever's going on in the animation 
graphics and 3D industry. Sorry about that Skype noise, that was loud. And anyway, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net if you didn't already, where you can take a look through the tutorials, even search if you wanted to just search views or watch me use my own website. Be sure to check that out. And if you want to get weekly tutorials, be sure to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're into the social media, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella, as well as like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. And if you want to keep learning about Adobe Fuse, be sure to check out some of those other tutorials by clicking those thumbnails where I get into creating the characters, editing the materials, bringing them into Photoshop, or loading them up to Mixamo.com where you can spit out the models and mocap data to Cinema 4D. There's lots of cool stuff you can do in Adobe Fuse, so be sure to check it out. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.